tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Hello, folks. Today we'll do a little language work, a workout with language, so to say. Uh, this channel is called Uhr 24, that is Clock 24. And if you want to translate Uhr, Uhr, which is German for clock, into other languages, let's try Russian. Chassis. Tokai. I think this is okay for now. And now let's go to English and we'll translate the word one into Italian. Una or uno. So what is two then? Due. Later in this tutorial we'll talk about uno and due. But now we go to ur, which is clock. How can you achieve this distribution here, especially when we scrub in the cached timeline? And when we go to the very beginning, something moves up. Now everything moves up. I'm going back in time. And when we go slowly forward, it falls down. And here we already see that something is happening. And let's get closer to the particles. Nice arrangement here. This is the boring, the straightforward layout. And here we get a different distribution. Ur is going to be changed into Ur as well, but down here, much more flat and more chaotic. How did I achieve this? Well, there are several objects in this scene which I made hidden. For example, the type mesh 1. So let me unhide it. Here you see where the particles land. And this is basically the main trick in this whole thing, in this whole project. They fall into this <laughs> open letter arrangement. You see lots of keyframes here because I animated it, it's shaking a little bit and that's the reason why the particles shake. Once they land it, they shake in here. And all the particles which don't land exactly there, they fall in between and they fall further down. So this is a new and empty scene because in all of my tutorials I try to start from the beginning and uh, what I'll do is I'll create te a text uh, and I just type in three and I could choose a different type font here for example the Lucinda Sans Serif and um, make it smaller and under geometry I find extrude distance which I can reduce just a little bit like this or half and then for creating particles inside of that uh, number three, I need to open the deformable type section and activate it. So I have subdivisions here in this front, whereas before I didn't. And now I go to particles and they are under effects, end particles, and I fill this object. And here you have the option box. I the last thing I tried was with the resolution of 40. It depends on the scale of your objects. Let's go for 40. And now we can hide the type mesh. And this looks like quite a nice arrangement of particles. Um, I don't know if you know the particle size is here. This is the end particle shape. The particle size is here and it's currently set to 0 0.042. I think that's the, one of the defaults here. 
and under shading when you open this shading section you find the blobby surface or whatever that is uh, that's a Maya software rendering uh, option for particles I go to spheres because they render nicely in Arnold and uh, they don't change the the size here now the particles have a nucleus that means they have gravity and they just fall down when I play the simulation now I um, want the particles to start from a position where they are lying on the flat on the ground so to say and when I rotate the type mesh now which is hidden I don't rotate the three with it and uh, that's why I delete the nucleus and the particles unhide my number three and make it rest sort of rest over here like this and move it up a little bit you know the, the thing is that uh, when you create particles inside that object the particles live a life of uh, independence after that they don't care whether where you put the three uh, where you locate it in, in space so let's do this again if we fill the object and now we actually can hide it again so it's lying there nothing changes it falls down and well nothing dramatic now um, I duplicate the type mesh control D and I unhide the duplicate this is a duplicate it has nothing to do with our a previous three so it's a three number two so to say <laughs> and uh, I open it at the top um, but uh, let me try to uh, do this animation without opening the top I select the type mesh and the particle with the control key so these two are selected now and I go to N cloth. why N cloth? I think I mentioned this s several times it's a little bit odd but the N world you have to search for things uh, in the end world it doesn't matter really under which menu it is put the passive collider that's what we're interested in uh, into the particle section and in the cloth and in the ha n hair section but they're in n cloth so we create a passive collider from R3 down there and now um, the simulation goes like this and this is certainly not what we want because we want them to land in the three and that's why I go to components that's with the right mouse button and I open the three here just delete these this is okay um, I think and go back to object mode you don't have to do these things precisely they just turn out nicely or not and then you redo things whatever but um, this is perfect isn't it so um, we have a, a very nice simulation and if you have particles behaving not that nicely um, go to particles under collisions you need to tick on self collide if this is unchecked you have a different animation want to see it this is something you don't want you want the particles to feel each other that makes a much natural flow of the whole system now don't forget to you want to trick your audience that's why you certainly want to hide this type mesh too and then things look fancy now the question is can you write the word uno which means one in Italian and turn it into due which is two in Italian of course you can and I won't show you how I did this but basically in the same way as here and also what you see here is uh, I changed the color can you do this change the color of the shader for the particles and in my third experiment I created mesh objects from the particles but that's something for another tutorial and finally I almost forgot to mention this because it's so natural for me 
we need sound. And I invested, uh, I think, 10 minutes to create the this sound effect. I think it changes the whole mood of the animation drastically. So always consider adding sound to your animations. And have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you.